All right, we move on here. Uh, my final play, what I thought was actually the play of the game. Now, it's, it's pretty easy to talk about any of the touchdowns being the play of the game. When you're walking the razor's edge of the entirety of what happened in the second half, mm. where, where, you know, I mean, Vic Fangio kind of pointed out, you know, if you don't have a two-play drive that goes into touchdown, who knows what you're talking about. If uh, you, you, in this case, after the Drew Lock interception, they end up getting three points. The Chargers, who were set up to at least get three points, get some points there. We're not talking about a Broncos win. Mm-hmm. But Bryce Callahan is the CB1. He, he has been playing out of his mind. He got like a 93 rating on pro football focus. I mean, he was just a baller out there. And, and for all of our concerns that came into the season, his health included, I feel like he, is, he showed great, and this was a spectacular play. Herbert in the shotgun. Denver rushes five. Herbert loads it up. Ball to Mike Williams. Fought four in the end zone and intercepted. Intercepted in the end zone by Bryce Callahan. Callahan went high with Mike Williams, and he came down with it. His second interception of the season, his sixth of the career. What a huge play by the Broncos' defense. Yeah, Callahan uh, is is a guy that's about my size, and going up against big Mike Williams like that, it, I was uh, fortunate enough to to have eyes on that play. And Matt, my goodness, he he just out hustled him for the ball. It was the right call from Justin Herbert though, mm-hmm. because it was a one on one in the end zone, and, and I watched it a few well, the times. Guy who had six inches on the corner. That's right, and there was there wasn't really another play underneath. Like right. everybody else was covered. Mm-hmm. Maybe you could have hit the back, but otherwise, like, that was the play. You had one-on-one in the end zone with one of your be- the best contested catch guy on your team. And as you mentioned, with a size advantage on the corner, I mean, it was just a great play for, for Bryce Kelly. And he would have been one of those, if Mike Williams comes down with that, of course, the Chargers are going to win the game. But also, you wouldn't have faulted Bryce Callahan because he had a great position. Yeah, it was great defense. There was a couple of plays on there that they scored on that was great defense, too, that you just couldn't play any better. Um, and then that was one the Broncos were fortunate enough to get the, the takeaway and, you know, worked out. Yeah, it d- definitely did. But for me, that was the play of the game. Like, like the, the spark was the Deshaun Hamilton completion on third down, mm-hmm. Philip Lindsay's run. But that play right there changed everything because – you kind of knew Drew Locke w- was was starting to play a little bit of confidence, but he threw that interception. And by the way, one of the things I loved about what they did, the very next time he took the field, he got a completion to Jerry Judy for a first down. Mm. They went right back to the air. Mm. That shows a lot of confidence. They just go, hey, we're going to hand the ball off. We're going to see if we can get some positive yards. Let's try to build on this. Hey, let, let's protect Drew's ego here. They didn't do that. They 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 kept him in it. And, and he found rhythm. And that's something that you can absolutely build on. Well, and you got to you got to put Drew Locke in a rhythm. That's that's what he is. He's a rhythm passer. You got to get him in that early, or else stuff like this happens where he goes long, stagnant plays without uh, getting what you need to. Let's right, get to uh, the final two minutes and uh, Locke. Everybody was out there sweating Melvin Gordon being in for that series, and I kept trying to say over and over again, he's the pass pro guy. He's going to be in there because you got to have a guy who can pass protect when you're in the two minute drill. And then they threw to him. Shotgun snap again. Lock hit as he throws ball. One-handed catch made by Melvin Gordon. What a catch. Clock is still running with 22, 21, 20. And I think Denver has taken their last time out on a miraculous catch by Melvin Gordon. It was a great catch, and, and he got the first down. The, the extra effort to lean over and get that first down right there. They had to come out and do it. It was huge across the board. It enabled everything else to uh, uh, to go on from there and, and, and for them to be able to, uh, uh, you know, get that touchdown here in just a few, which we can get to now. Okwagwanam in short motion. Locke rolls to his right. Locke throws a ball. In zone catch. Touchdown, Denver. Yes, Touchdown. Touchdown, Denver! Holy mackerel! One official said no. The other official said yes. They're still talking to referee Carl Sheffers. There's inbounds in the end zone with control of the ball for a touchdown. For a touchdown. Is under review. They're going to look at it. What a comeback! If this play stands by the Broncos, Locke, play fake, rolled to his right, threw to the end zone. Hamler had it, landed in bounds. Oh, yes, sir, folks. That is a Broncos touchdown. 
Oh, it was a great play, and KJ had the good good sense and presence of mind to get that butt down in the end zone there. Make sure two, that uh, two touchdowns that came down to a butt cheek, right, if you will. Right. Yeah. So making sure that he got that in there, it was just a good play, it was a good design, uh, and and it, it predicate it was predicated on the fact that you were trying to get that low zone corner to either bite on the quarterback coming up or to to go you know be backpedal in, and it was an option. Mm -hmm. For Drew Locke, he had the option of running it in or the option of, of throwing it to Hamler. As soon as the corner bit on the run, he lobbed it over him. Boom, touchdown. Yeah, it was great. And, and you know, seeing the young guys kind of step up, Albert Okawebanom having a spectacular athletic catch uh, for a touchdown where, he, you know, Drew Locke put it in a place where he could get to it. And then, yeah, K.J. Hamler, Jerry Judy had spectacular moments throughout the course of the game making plays. But that one right there was just like, okay, if he drops it or if it doesn't quite like like if, if Drew Locke doesn't quite complete that pass or something goes wrong, then you're saying, OK, there's still a lot to like about the game. You know how we always say this when you break down a game, there's the positives, there's the negatives, but you try to break it down the same way either way. Mm -hmm. You can acknowledge the problems that they had on offense and then simultaneously say they figured it out. I think the way they figured it out, though, the way they were able to come on and build some momentum, uh, Drew Locke was able to step into a lot of throws that he was not being able to do early on. A lot of the pressure came off. Uh, that's the thing that I, I feel is like obviously the lasting memory here, but something that they're going to be able to work towards. And, and I think KJ Hamler, this is an opportunity to get him more involved in the game. I mean, he's he had a, you know he's having a few catches here and there, but you know you drafted him in the second round because of his upside and speed. I, I'd definitely like to see more of that. Well, and there were people out there calling both those receivers busts and all that kind of stuff and all that nonsense. And, you know, it's just it's it's weird to watch. Everybody's got to make some kind of nonsensical, dramatic prediction or dramatic thing right now to try to get your attention and. Uh, you know, it was, you know, I, I think the Broncos came out and got your attention with the win. You know, that's three out of their last four. Uh, this team's got an upward trajectory. They, if the, uh, if the Raiders had lost, they would be tied with the Raiders in terms of uh, win total, second the division. The Broncos are one game out of the playoffs right now.